Hello everybody, Landi here, and today I will be returning to the great video game series known as Mario Kart. Mario Kart has tons of courses, whether that be the ones original to each of the games, or the Retro Tracks, which is their attempt on recreating older courses using the newer technology of each game. However, in this video I will be ranking all of the Nitro courses, which basically just includes the original courses, not the remakes. And to make it more simple on me, I'm actually going to also be excluding Mario Kart Tour from this because I don't have enough familiarity with Mario Kart Tour to really rank them, at least right now. Uh, when I do videos on the Booster Course Pass, I'll likely bring them up again. But yeah, as for these 25 courses that I will be listing in this ranking, they're all top-notch, best of the best. There are tons of Mario Kart courses, and to make it this high, you have to be really good. So, there isn't a course on this list that I do not like, and I love them all. They're basically all S-tier courses, and with that being said, I'm just going to hop right into it. The course that just made it into this top 25 is going to be a Mario Kart 8 course, and that is Cloud Top Cruise. From the get-go, I love the idea of racing on top of clouds, and I think this course does a perfect job at showing that, while also including some more unique factors with having lightning striking boost panels, and of course, an entire section on an airship. Combine that to the great music that is borrowed from Mario Galaxy, and you have an amazing Mario Kart track. Just above it is the first of two Super Circuit tracks that just barely snuck in here, and that is going to be Cheeseland. A Super Circuit track has to do a lot to really get into a top 25, since the 2D aspect of the game limits what they can do with the track, but I enjoy just both the design of Cheeseland along with the concept of a Mario Kart course made out of cheese. I mean, come on. Who comes up with these things? Nonetheless, a great course and one of the best 2D Mario Kart tracks. In at the number 23 spot is going to be the first of a decent chunk of Mario Kart Wii tracks on this list. And I am referring to Toad's Factory. Now, being based off of a factory, this level already has a lot going for it. I feel like... The concept of racing through a factory in of itself just has a lot of potential and they really go ahead with that potential while also throwing in some other unique aspects to it like the conveyor belts that can either push you forward or pull you backwards or trying to find boost panels within the mud section while there are big construction vehicles on either sides covering and uncovering the boost panels. This course is very well thought out and just a very fun course, and that music is iconic in and of itself. Number 22 is my favorite of the 2D Mario Kart courses, and that's going to be Ribbon Road from Super Circuit. Similarly to Cheese Land, this level just has a really unique visual concept where you're racing around on present wrappings and ribbons and... The course layout itself is great and lends itself to a fun race. And you, when you combine that to the texture of the track itself and also the background and the music and all that, it creates a fun environment to race on and a great course despite its limitations. Since I cannot count Mario Kart Tour tracks and any other retro tracks on this list, the number 21 spot is my only course from the Booster Course Pass, and I am referring to Yoshi's Island. This course takes a bunch of little Easter eggs from the Yoshi's Island games and crams them all into this full package where the hazards are well placed, the scenery is beautiful, and there's even little cool shortcuts like that pathway that appears at the end if you hit the cloud correctly. Little things like this give this course a lot of character and that's why I'm putting it all up here on my top 25. 
Number 20 is a level I have a lot of nostalgia for, and this is going to be Mushroom City. Now, there's a decent amount of city courses throughout Mario Kart, even before Mario Kart Tour, but Mushroom City was a classic, and I think it does a great job at creating a city-like setting in a Mario Kart game, and also producing enough hazards to make it difficult, but not so difficult that it's annoyingly unplayable. I just love all the little paths you can take throughout this city and how the course layout goes. And of course, when I was young and first, first playing this level, I would always try my best to find all the secret passageways, mainly referring to those little shadowy areas near the starting line. I thought that maybe you could go past those and discover more of the city, but unfortunately you cannot actually. It was a fun thing to imagine though, what could possibly be throughout this big city. Nostalgia aside though, it's still a great course and one of Double Dash's best offerings. In at number 19 is a course that a lot of people hate, and I can kind of see why, but at the same time, I love this course. It's awesome, and I'm talking about Grumble Volcano. The whole concept of the course deteriorating as the laps go on is just such a cool concept and reminds me of how the sun is slowly setting throughout the three laps on the super circuit level Sunset Wilds. It provides a sense of urgency and danger and I think it poses enough challenge that it's definitely difficult but I would never found it to be so crazy difficult and hard that it's unplayable like so many people say it is. Plus the whole environment of this level is intense which provides a great backdrop for a Mario Kart course so overall despite all the hate I think this course is a great level and a staple of Mario Kart Wii. These next two are very similar and very comparable and so I just decided to kind of group them together as this 1817 collective and I'm referring to Wahoo Loop and Maka Wuhu. Both of these are courses that are just split up into three laps. They are both continuous courses, each lap being totally different from the last. And I think they both have a lot to offer, exploring the island and having all these little shortcuts here and there, and just having a nice environment overall. And if I'm correct, I think these were actually the first Mario Kart courses that attempted this concept. Overall though, both these courses are great. 16 is going to be TikTok Clock, a really interesting course in that it's actually themed after a Super Mario 64 level, and that alone is a fun enough easter egg, but then you also just have the course itself where you're going in throughout these clocks and all these little clock themed obstacles, and it makes for a fun racing experience. TikTok Clock is a great course and a really novel idea. In at the number 15 spot is a course all about music. I'm talking about Music Park. I just love how music is incorporated throughout this level, whether it be the xylophones, the pianos, the drums, the bouncing music notes that even time up with the course's music in the background. It's great. It's music themed and it's just a fun one to play. And just above it at the number 14 spot is a course that is very similar in that it's also a music theme course and I'm talking about Electrodrome. I feel like both Music Park and Electrodrome are fairly similar in their music theme. However, they both have some differences and Electrodrome it takes a more electronic type of music rather than the acoustics of Music Park and this level features a bunch of winding paths and neon colors and lights and just a fun experience. Both these levels are great and yeah. At number 13 I have a great crossover course and that is Hyrule Circuit. The Legend of Zelda games are great and I feel like they lended themselves well to a Mario Kart course. Hyrule Circuit not only captures the feeling of Hyrule but it also involves some of the puzzle aspect of A Legend of Zelda especially with the whole Master Sword shortcut inside the castle. Beside all that though, I think that the course has a great layout and it proves itself worthy of being a Mario Kart course. At number 12 is another one of those 
three distinct lapped courses. This is going to be big blue. Now, a lot of people have this really high up. And, of course, it still is really high up for me, but they have it even higher up. But I just feel like there's courses that, that I'm more excited to play than this one. But still, don't let that discount how great this course is. It goes through this F-Zero themed land with all sorts of little winding paths and special aspects like the water physics that allowed you to basically fly across parts of the course. I think that's great. I think this level is great. And add that to the music and just the aesthetic of it all and how you're winding in and out, going upside down all over this world. It's crazy. I love it. And that is Big Blue. In at 11 and just barely missing out in the top 10. Very sad because this course is iconic. And I'm talking about Coconut Mall. This level is an amazing piece of Mario Kart. Pretty much everyone knows it. The music's iconic and just the idea of driving go-karts through a mall. A great idea and it's well executed here. I don't really have anything bad to say about it. And while both remakes are still great, Ming based off of this course, I think the original is still the best. At the number 10 spot, I have Piranha Plant Slide. This course is great in how it's kind of an homage to Super Mario Bros. while just having such a cool concept of you going down a water slide that leads you into this underground level of Mario and then goes into the full underwater section. It's crazy and it all ends with you flying back up through the castle and dodging some Goombas. It's a great course and I love the little journey it takes you on while you ride it. Coming in at number 9 is a course I really want to be added to the booster course pass and I'm referring to Airship Fortress from Mario Kart DS. This level takes you both throughout a fortress and onto an airship, believe it or not, and both aspects of it are fun. The little helixing going on in the fortress is great and then on the airship you have to worry about fire and Monty Mole and then of course the fun part of driving up to the airship having to dodge bullet bills as they shoot in your direction it's a great course and it's one that I was always glad to play when I was playing Mario Kart DS just barely slipping ahead of that is going to be Bowser's Castle from Mario Kart DS these two are basically interchangeable. I love both of them, and they've kind of gone back and forth in my rankings. Uh, but I have Bowser's Castle just a little bit of head because I feel like the little obstacles and rooms of this castle are unique and fun. It's probably my favorite Bowser's Castle there is, and I think that is just to how replayable it is and all the little unique aspects to it that you don't really see in other Bowser's Castles. So Mario Kart DS gets a big thumbs up for their Bowser's Castle and just a big thumbs up in general for having so many great courses. Number seven is going to be my favorite course from Double Dash. I am referring to DK Mountain. This level is loved by many and there's no question why. It has such a great level design in that you're shooting to the top of a mountain in the beginning and then you're just driving your way back down, dodging obstacles, weaving in and out of pathways, and it all ends off with the big rickety bridge. It's great, iconic, and just a really great Mario Kart Double Dash course. At the number 6 spot is another course that's well loved by fans and I'm referring to Mount Wario. This course starts all the way up at the top of Mount Wario where you're going on a journey from the top to the bottom and each leg has something unique and fun. The first leg has you swerving throughout the tops of the mountains and even going in a cave. The second leg features a dam and also driving through snowy woods and the third leg is the big final ski jaunt that takes you to the bottom where all the fans are it's a great level a great journey and there's no wonder why so many people consider this the best Mario Kart 8 course at the number five spot is Mute City it may seem strange that I'm actually putting Mute City 
so much higher than Big Blue. But I feel like being a circuit, Mute City just does a great job at being that F-Zero crossover course and having such a sense of speed. You are zooming throughout this course and that speed really makes it an exciting time. Trying to catch all the boost panels you can is a challenge in and of itself, but if pulled off successfully, it can be really satisfying. And just the look of it is fun. It's a great course, and I always enjoy playing it. So when I was making this list, for some reason I totally forgot about one of my favorite Mario Kart courses of all time. And that is Rainbow Road from Mario Kart 7. I don't know how, but I just totally forgot about it and didn't actually put it down on my list. And that's my bad. I just wanted to mention, though, that if I hadn't forgotten it, then this is where it would have gone. Right here at the number 5 spot. In the number 4 spot is a great course from Mario Kart Wii. I am referring to Koopa Cape. This level features you going around kind of a mountainous area and then diving into an underwater tunnel and all the obstacles on the way and just the layout itself is fun. I love it when you're driving on the stream trying to make sure to keep going as fast as you can and then you have the pipe section where you're desperately trying to avoid running into the lasers it's a great level and it's got plenty of challenges while still being fun enough that I always enjoy playing it and I'm really hoping that it comes to the booster course pass. Number three is a level that I feel like not many people are this high on but I just love this level. It is amazing and not counting retro courses this is my favorite course in Mario Kart 8. I am referring to Wild Woods. Basically, if I were to describe this level, I'd say it basically just combines Maple Treeway and Koopa Cape, and that creates a great level where you're going throughout a tree, taking water streams and boost panels. There's gliding in there, there's shortcuts. It's great. I think it's got to be one of the most underrated courses in Mario Kart 8, and I just love it. Plus, the look of it is just nice. It's like a it's like a cozy tree village inhabited by toads and other creatures. It's a great level and one of Mario Kart's best. At the number two spot we have the one and only, the Maple Treeway. In this level you are going throughout trees, driving up them, taking tricks, dodging wrigglers, bouncing on random trampoline tarp things. I mean, it's amazing. And on top of all that, it's got this nice fall theme that just feels cozy and has these little leaf piles where if you run into them, you have a chance on uncovering a mushroom that'll help you get a boost above the other players. It's an awesome course and filled with its own little hazards and opportunities to do tricks and shortcuts, and I love it. And it's my favorite Mario Kart Wii course. But coming in at my number one spot, and this is definitely what I'd call a personal favorite, I am referring to Waluigi Pinball. Waluigi is one of my favorite Mario characters, and Pinball is one of my favorite games. Combine the two of them, and you have something that already automatically is my favorite course. I mean, right there. But then you also just have a really great design where you're weaving back and forth and at the end you're shot into the main bulk of what a pinball machine has and you're dodging pinballs and hoping not to get hit by the flippers it's great it really makes you feel like you are driving through a pinball machine and the waluigi theme and all the pinball sound effects really add to this experience and Really, it feels more like an experience than just a race, and I love that. So, my number one spot is in Waluigi Pinball. Well, there you have it. There are my top 25 Mario Kart tracks. This list is bound to change a little throughout time, so similarly to my Fortnite skin list, I'll probably make this list again sometime down the road. And hopefully then I will remember to put in Mario Kart 7 Rainbow Road. 
But yeah, Mario Kart has plenty of great courses and great memories that can be attached to it. So feel free to let me know some of your favorite Mario Kart courses and which ones you tend to play over others. There's no wrong answer because there's just so much quality in Mario Kart tracks. But also, it's of course subjective, so everyone is entitled to their own opinion. I'd like to thank you all for watching this video and all the support you've given me. And I hope to see you all in the next video. So until then, see ya.